Hi everyone, my name is Vera, and I'm an art director and founder of Awil Studio. Our team working with Art Outsource, we provide uh, a lot of games for um, several clients, and we're working with uh, games of uh, different styles. And uh, uh, last year, we have finished uh, seven games, seven projects, and uh, during this work, I found that the most complicated task is UI design, because it's very complicated sphere. And there isn't enough informa information about how to do it well. So I'll just uh, try to change this situation. Um, the user interface is like an adapter between the user and the application. And it uh, should to give a minimum resistance then user is connecting with your app. To ensure it can meet that goal, the UI interface should be clear, simple, and invisible. The most significant trait of every UI is functionality, and the opportunities to make it beauty is strictly limited by the usability. And actually, uh, this is unique kind of art. Um, uh, you have to, to, to deal with the trait restrictions. And, uh, but anyway, games are made for entertainment. So look at this to UI. If we look to any service app, we can see that their UI is very simple. And the tools of creating it, uh, it's like, um, typography, color design, and, uh, simple icon stuff. But if it's game UI, we can make it more tangible and stylish. We can use any materials, decorations, some buttons, uh, voluminous icons, etc. And if a user has time to play, we can expect him to have a few seconds to read the UI. But the more hacker game is, uh, the simpler interface it, it should have. And if the game ca is casual and uh, the game play process is easy, the UI can be like a mini universe with a lot of incredible features. Um, this is uh, two examples of uh, the UI is what was made in our studio, and this one, the drug, is made with, uh, is, uh, has a lot of um, content, and we uh, choose the drug palette with simple icon stuff, and this one, is more casual game, it's some um, uh, such social, um, strategy, and they choose a very um, bright and color palette and uh, did it very, very funny, I think. So, but the devil is in the details. There are lots of uh, details in typography and graphic design that you, an ordinary user can't see. This loves are created by generation of designers who learn their, uh, with their mistakes. And if it's broken, User can't see that's wrong, but they feel it. Eyes get tired for inappropriate fonts, and if the uh, UI composition is badly organized, uh, user can't remember the logistic or can respond uh, to, ch to changes in the game process quickly. So, how we can organize it? There are some tips on working with UI. The first thing that's very important in UI design is a correct location of every element in the screen. A screen can be divided into several areas of perception with different uh, importance for viewers. Let's call the lower, uh, the lower part of screen the basement and the um, top one the sky. Um, the information in the sky is more noticeable than in the basement, so it's a good place for names and titles. But if we uh, put heavy, uh, any heavy element in the sky, it will make some pressure in the picture, but in the basement it will look good. The right and the left side of the screen have a different importance too, because the European user starts streets from the left side and go to the right side. Uh, if you put an element in the right side, user will begin their way from it. So it's good for essential messages, some new quests, uh, new offers in, oh sorry, new offers in uh, shop, etc. Uh, but if uh, the element is massive, 
it will form an obstacle and prevent the player uh, from understanding that happens in the screen. So it's mass massive elements are good for the right side. I call it uh, the exit of picture. The center of the screen is the most important area because it's a uh, zone of gameplay process. Therefore, we move into the screen from the left top corner to the right lower corner. And you can see that the most noticeable part of the game screen is the left top corner. Usually here any main info can be placed, uh, like uh, username, label, umana, etc. Uh, actually, it works not only in UI design. We can come across the similar situation in advertising, for example. Uh, remember the billboards in the street? Uh, the slogan is situated in the center of the billboard or in the uh, left top corner. And the phone number is situated in the right lower corner. If we will change the situation, if we will change this composition, it will be um, strange, I think. This is an example of uh, composition for many games, I think. Okay. The top area, the game screen, is used for information. He, uh, there can be names, progress bars, uh, resource panels, buffs, debuffs, etc. And the lower areas are used for actions. There can be uh, some active skills, abilities, often using menus, chat panels, etc. It's used for uh, mobile devices because we uh, play with the fingers in the lower part. And it's used for um, PC games because we are uh, using mouse in the uh, lower part of screen and it, it's comfortable for user. So, if you want to make the element super noticeable, like an attack boot button in Fountain, for example, you can place it near the center. And the second thing that we need to remember are familiar places, colors, and forms. Actually, in this place, I always remember the uh, singlet song like, all around me are familiar places, worn out faces, worn out places, you know? Yeah, I think it was a bit terrible situation for author of this canton, but if it's about game UI, it's a very good choice. So, for example, close buttons, usually red, and situated in the um, right top corner, yep? If you make it blue, and put it in the left lower part. I feel, uh, I think like uh, user um, user will want to find it. Yeah, it it will be difficult. This is an example of a standard geology box. A name is in the head. A picture is in the left, a text box uh, is in the right, and the important information like um, game quest is under the text box, and the action buttons is in the uh, lower side. But actually, it's a very obvious situation. Not every situation in UI design is so obvious like this. So we should uh, find a good reference uh, of some UI designs before ahead. And if any element has a regular place, color or icon, use it. Don't try to create something unusual in this case. The third leg of a good interface de development is studying on physical features of using every kind of device. Here you can see um, a, different, uh, a difference between several touch zones in mobile devices. The green is the most uh, convenient, but I would advise you to not put any information in this place because it will be always hidden with the finger. Uh, the orange zone is not comfortable, but the user needs the second hand to put it. And the red one is useless. It's near the edge of the device, and we can bend the finger to, uh, for, for reach these this, um, areas. So every kind of device has its own features, and uh, we need to know them beforehand. The next part, 
the font. The font on a game interface must be readable. Uh, you can choose an appropriate style, but the beauty will be in the second place. They can use complicated fonts for the logo, for example, because the letters is big and the uh, user will read it just once. Uh, but um, the smaller letters are, the more readable it should be. And don't use more than two typefaces and one uh, UI design. If um, your interface has, has lots of several typeface, uh, type um, types of text content, use any multi trace and typefaces. It will keep the um, integrity of your design. Color, size, and tracing of the font must be relevant to the extent of importance of the information. So the, the most significant information, such as item names, uh, game questions, etc., uh, are indicated by color and size. And the least significant information can be lower size and non-contrastive color. If all text in your design is, um, had the same style and the same color and um, size, it will be like noise, and it will be different to, um, to understand that happens. Uh, the information that user has to see instantly, for example, hit points in the bottle, uh, can be a terribly bright in color, because it should be notable in the first place. So then you are choosing the color palette for your project, you should remember next things. The more contrastly the, the color palette is, the more readable fonts and infographics are. That's why unique color, dark or light palette with simple fonts of contrastive color is a better choice for hardcore games. But if uh, the game is more casual, you can choose a colorful palette with uh, soft contrast. This is an example of UI in uh, WedgeMade in our studio. And then this one is very colorful, but it's very simple stuff. And if the interface has a lot of information, we choose a um, non-contrastive color for uh, background and some active colors for make some accents. A good interface has a passive colors and an active colors. Passive colors are soft uh, and calm, and active, uh, bright and flashy. They are used for the most important elements. You can employ a wide range of shades and colors in passive palette, but be careful with the active one. Uh, in sensible choice, there are two or one or two active colors in one UI. So far, three active colors can make um, harmonic palette but it's difficult to ask, I think. Uh, but if it's more, it will be a terrible mess. Make sure that uh, the player rests his eye on their elements you want him to notice first of all. The order of interface perception should go hand in hand with the gameplay process. Remember that UI is an integral system some methods of indication uh, uh, and presentation at the same points uh, and content types uh, should be similar. Like um, all of the information about uh, all description uh, have the same color and the same place. All icons have the same style. Make a visible logic of your interface and try to stick it during while the project. Now it's the final part of my presentation is actually building process. The interface building process is, is a joint work of an uh, artist and a game designer. A game designer is responsible for the game usability. He's one of who knows technical features and uh, gameplay requirements. And the artist, artist's responsibility is the language of perception. They should collaborate very closely for permanent information exchange and uh, development control. Uh, 
So if you're a project manager and you have opportunity to build your team, take care about communication between artist and UI design, uh, game designer. So here we can see the steps of UI development. The first one, create UI mockups. To start the process, you should make a graphical theme of all your window and screens and describe the user's story, how user go to, uh, from screen to screen. And uh, the next step, test the mockups. It's a very important step in development. The, uh, there are many programs and services for making a simple prototype. Spend your time to do it and test in it and you wouldn't have to do it twice. The next step, create a design makeup. A design makeup can be created by any reference and samples of our design, uh, of our interfaces. It shouldn't be very um, clear and uh, very good. Uh, it just should uh, show the idea, colors, styles, and direction of development. You uh, may um, do it just uh, as quick as possible. Next step, develop the main interface. Choose a main screen of your project, which will be mostly useful, uh, and, and did it, and did it that first. You should resolve the main issues of your appearance just making it. And the next step, create the most complicated uh, window. It's like a crash test for your ideas, your uh, color palette and um, font stuff. So uh, then you finished uh, these two steps, you have a basement of your interface and now we can just um, wor work on, work with it. So the, the next step. Create your base file with a global element. It can be backgrounds, buttons, icons, and decorative elements, uh, what you will be able to use in many other situations. If you have, have such file, uh, it will be easier to work with the different um, employees to uh, still work in, uh, with the other designers. But if you are a unique designer in the project and you're sure that uh, you will do it just just once, <laughs> uh, it will be uh, more simple uh, to create all the stuff if you have such file. So the seventh step is very easy. Okay, it's um, you, we need time to do it, but it's very easy. Um, you just uh, create all the uh, other frames, just do it. And uh, the final step is uh, very important, is a uh, tracking of your interface. The final build always looks different from the design makeups. Then building a game, any programmer can make some errors and they may destroy all the project. The final correction can take, can take a long time, especially if your project is large. So if you are a project manager, um, think about it. Uh, and if there have been more than one artist in the project, the final check may uh, include a style, size, and color correction. So um, if you did it. I think your interface is very good and tasty. Uh, so I'm, I'm very glad to uh, to be here and uh, ready to our questions. Feel free to ask me any, any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, any questions from the crowd to Vera? She's expecting that. <laughs> Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, Hi. When you show the mock-up for the informational pop-up or informational yeah. message, put the OK button in the uh, left side. When the, you, you show the accessible part of uh, mobile uh, devices, landscape or portrait, mm -hmm. the, more the most accessible part is uh, bottom right. Do you think switch these buttons uh, could be useful for the the UX or the usability for the in the in the pop-up information? 
in the pop-up information, yep. uh, the order of the button yes or OK and cancel yep. or delete, uh, it's uh, first OK and in the, in the right side, yep. cancel. Yep. But if uh, we analyze the, the more accessible part in a mobile device, always it's bottom right. Okay. Actually, um, this difference, um, I, I know uh, uh, about that you talk, but this, this um, depend uh, of um, everyone's situation, I think, because uh, their composition then, uh, um, the, well, the red uh, button is here and the green one is here. Is, um, a bit, uh, is more similar, but uh, sometimes in some projects you can uh, change it for um, for make it better. But uh, then um, UI designer thinking about this composition, they should uh, um, take every choice with the uh, understanding that happens and why uh, he do it. I think. Thanks. Uh, so I, I think that's a really good point you're making there. And actually, I, I had a thought myself because you had a yes and no button as well as a cancel button in the upper right corner. Yeah. And I think it's kind of confusing to have a no button as well as a cancel button. Like it's not really defined which does what. So what you could come up with is a, a larger OK button, which you could reach with your thumb, right? And uh, the cancel button in the upper right corner for closing it. And then you would not break uh, your um, initial UI design where you say, okay, yes is always on the left side and no is always on the right side. And uh, you, you still stick your, uh, to your uh, like initial thought, but um, have it more accessible in, an, in a way. In one of the screens you showed a red area that is very hard for yep. a thumb to, to reach. Yep. If that space is lost to me for user interface, what should I put there? Background, a beautiful background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? So I would have, I actually have a little bit of a question. So I know it's a, it's a, it's a big question, but what would you change in the UX or UI of your game if you want to adjust it to different cultures? For example, if I have a, a, a game like you showed, which is meant for the Ukraine market, if I want to get it to the Chinese market or the Japanese market, of course there are you know, colors and yep. other conceptions that it. you have to keep. So why would you change what like the three top things actually, that come to your mind? Actually, it's a very good uh, question because uh, in my presentation I told about um, the read mode of um, European users and uh, the Asian users reads from the I think uh, the left side to the right side and I'm I'm one of them I'm from Israel. Yeah. We read from and the right Israel, to the left. Yeah, in Israel too. The same situation. So, I think that uh we should to choose the um country that um, which is more important for developer and uh, make interf interface most uh, readable and most sensitive for this uh, uh, audience. And uh, then when uh, every developer will choose uh, what to do with the different uh, areas, we can uh, still work with just one mode of interface because actually if something is, is all interface is good and something is um, a bit uh, uncomfortable for user, if we have an uh, energy and uh, potential to change the interface for uh, every part of users, every kind of users, it will be better, I think. Because something needs to localization for different areas of perception. I'm art director for a small game company in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. and I always struggle. And previously, we made a lot of DS games. You had little space, uh -huh. and you always needed to, to have the clearest and biggest uh, fonts. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, when there was a localization needed, we thought, oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Another 10 days, 20 days at least of artwork just changed everything. So uh, sometimes the opportunities to make beauty, our interface is not so big because the first point is usability and sometimes that usability loves um, broken our things about beauty, I think. And sometimes it's um, some project that we, uh, what uh, is very difficult to change something in, in that. So I think that in this case, you can uh, work with color palette. Because uh, if you can't uh, rebuild all the, the interface to make it of a, um, of a and very beauty, uh, you can um, try the color palette, what will be more comfortable, more... Quiet. <laughs> Quiet, yeah, yeah, I get it. Quiet. Easy. Yeah. Really, it's work. If the color palette don't... Um, is not too busy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vera. Thank you, that was the last Thank question. you. Thank you, guys.